Do you ever look at rich people and wonder, did they just get lucky? What do they have that I don't have? To answer this question, I studied 100 self-made millionaires. And turns out, it's not luck. All of these self-made millionaires did the exact same five things that I'm about to share with you. Most of these things I already expected, but one of them I actually found quite surprising. Number one, in a speech she gave at Harvard, Rihanna, one of the richest female celebrities in the world, was telling the story of how when she was a little girl, five years old, she was watching one of those infomercials about donating to support kids in Africa. And in her speech, she talks about how as she was watching this commercial and feeling so bad for these poor kids in Africa, she was telling herself, when I grow up, I want to be rich so I can help all of those kids. Little did she know she would be able to do exactly that as a teenager. When I was five or six years old, I remember watching these commercials and I was watching other children suffer in other parts of the world. And I would think to myself, like, I wonder how many 25 cents I could save up to save all the kids in Africa. And I would say to myself, you know, like when I grow up and I can get rich and I'm gonna save kids all over the world, I just didn't know I would be in the position to do that by the time I was a teenager. <laughs> How inspiring is Rihanna? Here's another cool story. Jim Carrey. And this is way back before he became famous when nobody really knew him. In 1995, he took out a blank paper check and he wrote himself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered. And he dated it Thanksgiving 1995. Sure enough, a couple years later in 1995, he got casted for a role in Dumb and Dumber and he was paid $10 million. This might sound really obvious, but the first step to becoming rich, to becoming a millionaire, is actually to first decide that you want to be rich. I love that example of Jim Carrey, but here's another one, Warren Buffett. As you all know, Warren Buffett is one of the richest men in the world. But he definitely didn't start out that way. Warren Buffett was actually born during one of the toughest economic periods in American history. As a child, he grew up in poverty after the great financial crash of 1929. And tired of being so poor, at seven years old, he borrowed a book called 1,000 Ways to Make $1,000. And that's when he started hustling, selling chewing gum, selling Coca-Cola, doing newspaper routes. And that's when he started building his fortune. Now, I'm nowhere near as rich as Warren Buffett, obviously, but I am also a self-made billionaire, so I thought I'd tell my story too. I can definitely say for sure that this did not happen by accident. I very clearly remember setting goals. At one point, when I was really in debt, my goal was to get to zero. But once I got to zero, I then set a goal to make $100,000. And then once I hit that goal, I then set a goal to make a million dollars. So there was always a goal, it never happened by accident. If you look at all these stories across the board of these 100 self-made millionaires, not one of them became rich by accident. They all set out with a dream, a decision to become rich. Look, everybody wants to be a millionaire, right? There's not a single person you'll talk to who wouldn't say, sure, I would love to be a millionaire. Like, yeah, that would be nice. But that's very, very different from saying, I want to be rich, I will be rich, deciding to be rich. So if there's one thing we can take away from these stories is that if you want to be rich, it all starts with first deciding that you want to be rich. And now for number two. So y'all know who Oprah Winfrey is, right? You might know her as the most famous talk show host of all time. Also, maybe one of the richest African-American women in history. What you might not know about her is that she started her career at age 17 as a radio talk show host making $100 a week. But she loved it so much that she continued on in that field and then eventually moved over to television where she went on to become an anchor and a co-host of several successful morning shows. She moved to Baltimore and then later to Chicago, became a co-host of a very popular morning show that later became The Oprah Winfrey Show. The Oprah Winfrey Show then went on to become the highest rated TV talk show in the country and has gone on to win multiple Emmy awards. By the time she was in her 30s, she was making $30 million annually. And at one point, her annual salary by the time the show wrapped up was $315 million a year. That would be $10 per second. So what can we learn from Oprah? Well, the woman is now 70 and you see how much money she's made. But what we don't see is that she started honing her craft as a talk show host ever since the age of 17. Like she found what she loved early on and she stuck with it and became the best and top in her field at it. And so what we can learn is as a self-made millionaire, you need to be a specialist. 
You need to focus and get so good at something that you provide so much value in that one thing. And then you get paid for it. Because really, the amount of money you can make is only commensurate with the amount of value that you provide. And if you just dabble in a lot of things, but you never get really good at one thing, then how will you ever be able to charge top dollar for it? Another story where we can see this in action is with Mark Cuban. Obviously, you know him as the famous guy in Shark Tank. Also, he's the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. And these days, he's doing a lot of different things, but that is actually not how he started out and made his fortune in the first place. In fact, he started out selling garbage bags door to door at the age of 12. When he got a little bit older, he got a job selling PCs, remember those? At one of the first software retail stores in Dallas, Texas. And it didn't make enough, so he also had a bartending job at night. And while working in this software retail store, he realized that he had a passion for technology and also for sales. And although he was only making $18,000 a year, he was really into it and he would stay up late at night at home just reading tech manuals. He just wanted to learn as much as possible so that he could be a better salesperson. Over time, he built up a clientele and was able to get so good at sales that he started earning a couple hundred extra bucks per month. From there, a local consultant who was really impressed paid him some referral fees and he ended up getting a $1,500 check. And for the first time in his life, he had more than $1,000 in his bank account. From there, he went on to build his first company called Microsolutions, which was a tech company. And it was really his sales skills, his ability to pitch something that enabled him to later grow that company and later sell it for millions and millions of dollars. So that is actually how Mark Cuban got rich. He not only specialized in sales, but he specialized in sales of technology, tech sales. Now that is specializing. So even though you see him on Shark Tank and owning sports teams and all these different things, that's not actually how he got his fortune. He started out specializing. So again, this is a huge takeaway is you need to focus so that you can get really good, go deep instead of going wide, and then get paid top dollar for it. You only need one thing to get rich. So pick that one thing, stop having shiny object syndrome and focus on it until it works. And now for number three. So far, I've told you the stories of all really well-known millionaires and billionaires, but now I'm gonna tell you the story of a lesser known millionaire, but her story is super impressive nonetheless. And that person is Nika Yusei, the founder of Fashionika, which is an online store that sells vintage secondhand luxury purses. So back in the day when Nika got started in all of this, she just had a passion for buying and selling secondhand luxury handbags. She was really good at finding them, flipping them and making a profit. And so her fiance suggested that maybe she turn that into a business. So in January 2021, Nika took a jump and spent $15,000, which was really scary for her, to get this side hustle up and running. Six months later, she founded her Shopify website, Fashionika. By the end of that year, her website had made $300,000 selling secondhand purses. Her side hustle was going so well that this was enough to convince her to quit her corporate job making $82,000 a year. Ever since then, she's been running Fashionika full-time from her house in California, and by now, Fashionika has generated over a million dollars in revenue since it started. And as of now, it's making over $55,000 a week. I love this story of Nika, and I can totally relate. Now, I'm not famous by any means, but I'm also a self-made millionaire, and I can really relate to Nika's story because I also, at some point, decided I would stop climbing the corporate ladder to take a bet on myself and start my own business. And there was this awkward period where when I wasn't making money in my business, I was just sort of freelancing and doing random things to make ends meet. And I didn't have a business yet. And I was watching all my friends climbing the corporate ladder and making more and more money. And I really felt like I had made a mistake. But no, I kept with it and I just kept going towards my dream. Eventually my business did get off the ground and that is the main reason why I have made the money I have today. And so what can we learn from both Nika and my story? And that is to bet on yourself. If you look at all of these self-made millionaires, something they all did in common is at one point, they had to take a bet on themselves. They had to take a risk and say, even though I'm scared shitless, I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna put the money down. I'm gonna quit the job. I'm gonna do this thing. Because honestly, the way the world is set up is those who take the risks is who most of the financial rewards accrue to. That's just how things work. And so something that all these self-made millionaires have in common is this innate sense of confidence that if they just bet on themselves, it's gonna work out. Number four, love him or hate him, we can all learn from the example of Elon Musk. 
If you look at Elon Musk's story of founding Tesla and SpaceX, it is a crash course in what persistence and faith and tenacity look like. Tesla has gone through so many ups and downs. When the company launched, it faced so much skepticism from the auto industry. They had production difficulties and a lot of financial hardships. And at some point, Elon Musk had to invest the last of his own funds in order to keep the company afloat. Despite all these obstacles along the way, Elon Musk persisted. And today, Tesla is one of the top car manufacturers in the world. And its market cap is now even bigger than a lot of the big, well-known established car companies. And then, of course, there's SpaceX. SpaceX has had its fair share of rocket explosions, failed launches, and near bankruptcy. And actually, at one point, SpaceX had three consecutive failed launches to the point where Elon Musk estimated that they had exactly enough money left for one more launch before the company had to shut down. But despite all these setbacks, Elon Musk persisted, he had faith in his vision, he overcame obstacles, and in 2008, SpaceX launched its first successful launch into space, the Falcon 1 rocket, which is the first rocket to ever be launched into space by a privately funded company. Maybe you've also heard of James Dyson. And even if you haven't heard of James Dyson, you're probably already familiar with his famous vacuum cleaners. Currently, James Dyson is the fifth richest person in the United Kingdom. And even though his vacuum cleaners are extremely popular all over the world, it wasn't always like that. When he first got started, he actually had to go through 5,126 prototypes before he landed on the actual vacuum cleaner that made him famous and rich. Not to mention, it took him five years to do that and over tens of thousands of dollars in debt. In fact, he actually took 15 years to get his first successful product to market ever since he started out as an inventor. So what can we learn from James Dyson and Elon Musk? Well, tenacity. It takes persisting through challenges because let's face it, life is not easy. And if you're trying to make a bunch of money, there will be challenges along the way and it's just way too easy to give up. I think in this world of instant gratification and TikTok and where everything's just so easy and on demand, like nobody wants to persist and do hard things anymore. But these stories go to show that the people who really make it to the top are the ones who don't never face challenges, but are the ones who are able to face any challenge that comes their way. And now for number five, this one actually surprised me because it's one thing to become a millionaire, but it's another thing to stay a millionaire. And you would think that these millionaires, they know how to spend money and be flashy, but that is that really wasn't the case. Take the example of Alan Corey, real estate entrepreneur. When he was starting out, he set a goal to buy one property a year, every year for five years, so that he could one day retire. And so he continued working at his day job and divided his salary in half. 50% for his expenses and 50% for saving towards buying his houses. And he kept them in two separate bank accounts and he did not give himself access to this second bank account. After one year of saving, he had saved up $10,000, which he used as the down payment on his first property of $100,000. And every year from then on, he had the money saved and kept on building his portfolio. And that's why he has the portfolio that he has today. He was really good with money. He had a plan. He had savings goals. And I guarantee you that's the reason he got rich and also is able to stay rich. Another example is with Marshall Lynch, a former NFL player. Now athletes are notorious for making a lot of money and blowing it. And that's why they're not on this list anymore. But Martian Lynch is because he, unlike many NFL players, was really savvy with his money. Early on, he decided that whatever money he made from his salary as a football player, he would not touch and he would just live off whatever money he got from doing endorsements. He did not splurge on luxurious things, flashy things. He just stuck to the basics and he ended up buying a few properties, investing in a restaurant here and there, and today is very, very wealthy. And if he stuck with his plan, his net worth is definitely at least $50 million. And of course, I can't resist but mention Warren Buffett, who is one of the richest men in the world, but still to this day lives in the same house that he's lived in since the 1950s. Not only that, but he drives a modest car and loves having breakfast at McDonald's. And so these are perfect examples of being smart and strategic with your money, not chasing flashy things and not spending and spending just because, but having a plan for your money and spending it wisely. I loved learning about all these self-made millionaires and hearing their diverse stories. I was super inspired how so many of them came from even difficult backgrounds, but as you can see, it's not luck. Whatever background you come from, if you just do these five things, one, you decide that you want to be rich and don't make yourself available to any other option. Two, become really good at one thing. Go deep instead of wide and then charge top dollar for that thing. Three, believe in yourself. Take a bet on yourself because you've only got one life to live and what have you got to lose? 
Four, never ever give up. And five, be smart and strategic with your money. Learn how money works, learn the rules of the game, and don't just spend on stupid shit. That's it for this video. I really hope you got something out of it. I post videos about money, investing, and mindset every single week, so please subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Bye.